Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Ayalu Teferi. I am a professor of medicine and hematology at the Mayo Clinic, uh, and uh, I am here to discuss uh, an article that's going to be published in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings shortly. Uh, has to do with uh, genetic risk stratification in myeloproliferative neoplasms. As most of you uh, know, cancer is uh, and remains a major health challenge in the United States and globally, um, and uh, it accounts for almost 25% of all the deaths, uh, second only to cardiovascular diseases. Fortunately, um, cancer death rates have been in the decline over the last several years. Uh, most of this has been attributed to tobacco control and early uh, detection and treatment, uh, but the most exciting new component to this equation uh, is that uh, uh, there has been tremendous advances uh, in treatment, uh, as in targeted therapy and immunotherapy. Uh, and most of uh, uh, this uh, has uh, come through the, uh, our better understanding of the uh, cancer genome and transcriptome, uh, understanding the uh, genetic infrastructure uh, of cancer not only allows us uh, to uh, really decipher the pathways that are important in uh, uh, the development of cancer and it is sustenance uh, and targeting those pathways, but also it helps us in accurately predicting on an individualized basis as to uh, uh, what the survival or the complication rates would be in a specific patient. Uh, the specific article that is published uh, addresses this in the context of myeloproliferative neoplasms. Uh, that includes the three what I call JAK2 mutation enriched uh, uh, clinical pathologic entities, including essential thrombocythemia, polycythemia vera, and myelofibrosis. In, in terms of utilizing genetics, as a prognostic tool in these diseases. Uh, we uh, focus on three levels of genetic informants. Uh, the first level comes from uh, cytogenetic studies, which is simply looking at the number and structure of uh, chromosomes uh, under a microscope. Uh, the second level comes from uh, analysis of uh, uh, driver mutations. And these are mutations which we believe uh, give gross advantage to the cancer cell and therefore uh, are important in clonal expansion. And, and the third uh, level of genetic information comes from uh, other mutations. In terms of myeloproliferative neoplasms, uh, cytogenetic studies and driver mutations have been in the forefront uh, in terms of uh, investigating their value as prognostic markers. Uh, and for example, uh, in myelofibrosis, uh, both uh, karyotype, which is cytogenetic information, uh, and driver mutation of status have been uh, almost indispensable uh, in, in identifying the patients that are uh, at risk for premature death uh, and therefore um, uh, where uh, high toxicity uh, treatment up front might be justified. In that regard, the most important uh, uh, genetic information, I believe, uh, is as to whether or not a patient is mutated for one of the driver mutations, what we call uh, type 1 color mutation, or not. In other words, it really doesn't matter if you are not mutated for type 1 color mutation, it really doesn't matter whether you are type 2 color or JAK2 mutated or you're negative or all three, that would be called triple negative. Uh, the outcome is the same uh, in that regard, but if you are type 1 color mutated, the outcome is much better. So in a patient with myelofibrosis, it is very important to know whether they are type 1 color mutated or not. In addition to that, uh, the chromosome abnormalities uh, are, are well uh, listed uh, 
in, in several major publications uh, to show us which ones are good chromosomal abnormalities, which ones are bad, and which ones are very bad. So if you take that information on karyotype and add it to the driver mutational status, uh, then you will have a general picture as to who will do very well and therefore uh, may not be the best candidate for high-risk uh, uh, treatment up front uh, versus who will do uh, not as well and therefore where uh, the risk of, for example, allogenic stem cell transplant might be justified. For polycythemia vera, similarly, um, cytogenetic information is important. Abnormal cytogenetics is associated with poor outcome. Um, and uh, uh, the driver mutation, in, in the driver mutation uh, uh, category, uh, since all patients with polycythemia vera are jacked to mutated, uh, the type of driver mutations does not matter as much in, in, in that disease. In essential thrombocythemia, uh, neither the chromosomal abnormalities nor the driver mutational status have been shown to be associated with different survivals, but um, patients who are mutated for JAK2 or MPL, MPL, as opposed to those who are mutated for CALAR or not mutated for any of the three, so so-called triple negative ones, uh, uh, there appears to be a significant difference in the risk of thrombosis. So in patients with essential thrombocythemia, it is best not to have a JAK2 or MUPL mutation. Uh, in fact, uh, having a multiple mutation also appears to be associated with a higher risk uh, of transformation into myelofibrosis. Uh, so therefore, driver mutational status is important uh, in letting us know uh, uh, the complications or uh, the risk of complications in essential thrombocythemia. And finally, in the other mutational categories, we have just published in blood advances in blood advances in 2016, uh, listing a number of mutations uh, that might predict uh, not only overall survival, but also leukemia-free survival, myelofibrosis-free survival, in all three myeloproliferative neoplasms. Uh, obviously, uh, that information needs to be validated by additional new studies before it, it becomes endorsed uh, and put in, in clinical practice. But uh, nevertheless, there are two mutations that uh, are, would make me very concerned, uh, and those are ASXL1 and SRSF2 mutations. And the presence of such mutations in any of these diseases uh, concerns me that uh, patients might be at risk uh, for leukemic transformation sooner than later, uh, and then premature death. And these are the patients that need to be, at the minimum, monitored very closely. And, and sometimes be offered uh, high-risk treatment up front. Obviously, the story does not end here. Uh, there, we're going to be uh, talking about more and more mutations uh, as time goes by, but for now, I will close here. Thank you. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.